Um, today, John Paul Miller, Solid Rock Church, Inc., and the estate of Micah Francis Miller, along with individual members of the Francis family, have reached a full and final settlement on all presently filed litigation. The parties have also signed a full mutual release on all potential future litigation. The terms of the settlement agreement are sealed under a confidentiality agreement. The agreement and release include, but are not limited to, the dismissal with prejudice of the matters currently pending in both family court and probate court of Horry County. You just witnessed in court the, the withdrawal of the petition in, in probate court. Um, Micah's family, Pastor Miller, and the church have set their differences aside to allow Micah's memory to live on without the encumbrance of contentious litigation. All parties now consider this matter closed. Those that have sought justice for Micah should feel accomplished in helping the, Fran the Francis family in reaching this milestone. South Carolina criminal investigators have concluded their work of following up on the investigation done by Robinson County Sheriff's Office in this case with nothing new to report. Unfortunately, we don't know every piece of information that led to the death of Micah. We do know that her life did serve a purpose. Her life mattered. Those that have spent every Sunday morning protesting outside of Solid Rock Church, chanting justice for Micah, should recognize this time of healing and move on with their lives. We only ask that you remember Micah as the wonderful, beautiful person that she was. And now Regina may have something to say. It is true that we reached a global settlement on all issues that could have been brought uh, to court. Some additional things that are, uh, some things that are pending now, as well as things that could have been filed, those have been resolved as well. As far as justice for Micah, that we are ready to go to the next chapter. And the next chapter is to go and convince our General Assembly to take a look at the coercive control law bill. We need that on the agenda ASAP. We need it taken seriously. We need it to be made into law in the very next session of the General Assembly. Standing by and doing nothing is unacceptable. It is absolutely embarrassing. I urge everyone, if you want the final piece of justice for Micah, which means justice for all who have been domestically abused, please, please put your efforts into getting in touch with your legislators. Get in touch with the people who have the power to do something here and do it now. These other things that you're doing, that time has passed. It is time to move to the next chapter. We want to focus on the memory and the beauty of Micah and everything that she has represented for herself and every single person that has ever been in her situation. And we, her family, when I say we, I'm talking about the Francis family. They need your help. They need your help on this. We don't want to talk about Mr. Miller anymore. We want to move forward to the next chapter, and that is getting this law passed. So I urge you, please, contact my office if you want to volunteer. We are putting together benefits to raise money for this cause. We are also looking at a potential rally on the Capitol if the General Assembly doesn't get it together. Now, I know that some of you are going to be somewhat disappointed to hear that we reached an agreement. Let me tell you about that agreement. First of all, the terms are supposed to be confidential, but nobody can keep a secret anymore. Setting that aside, please don't be disappointed by it. Whenever you're involved in litigation, in litigation of this magnitude, and this many things to cover and all the complexities of it could take years to go through a court system. We do not want the Francis family or anyone to be drugged through litigation for years. We want to put this behind us and move on to the next chapter that matters. And when we say that we've gotten justice for Micah as a result of this 
settlement, it is true. So um, again, um, this uh, we've not just uh, closed the probate court matter today, but we've resolved every matter between the Francis's, Mr. Miller, and and the church. So uh, we can't answer any questions about the settlement or about the agreement. That's the point. It's confidential, and it needs to be that way. Um, we, you can try to ask a question that doesn't pertain to that, and we might be able to answer it if you want to try. Um, anybody have a question? So can I? I you might not be able to answer this, but the obvious question, Regina, if you can speak to this on the family side, but how did you guys come to this agreement of withdrawing the request? Um, very good question. So part of um, resolving all of the cases is that's pretty much where we start, okay? The global settlement, which really, you know, uh, I was also retained to file a civil action, potentially wrongful death and things like that, okay? Litigation, there's always our side and their side. There's always strengths to cases and weaknesses to cases, okay? And so it's in order to, um, you know, to facilitate moving to the next, the next place that we need to be. Um, it was in the best interest of the family to do that. We had to always, there's, there's always this duty and excuse me, that's this, this and that. Um, there's always a duty uh, whenever litigation is filed, okay? We have court rules here uh, that say that any, any matter that is contested is required to go through ADR, alternative dispute resolution, i.e. mediation. So regardless, even if we had gone, went ahead and filed actions, we would have been under court rules to engage in mediation to get it resolved. You know, we can't get Micah back, okay? There's no undoing that. The only way that the, the law can provide anything to anyone that's ever, um, you know, damaged in any kind of way um, is for compensation um, and other, other things that we all agreed to um, you know, certain other terms other than that. So it, it was going to be a matter of time. We would be required to do that anyway. We call this pre-litigation, uh, you know, mediation. We didn't have a formal mediation, but uh, Russell and I had engaged in an in intensive um, talking back and forth right up to the last second of coming to this court. Attorney Long, you referenced the state reviewing some of the Robeson County investigations. I also noticed that your statement conspicuously did not mention any potential federal investigation into Pastor Miller. Can you comment on the status of that federal investigation? Can you tell us which state agency reviewed the Robeson County investigation? I, I don't believe I indicated state or federal. I said South Carolina investigators. You can, can you tell uh, us who you were referring to when you were... I'm referring to whoever has investigated this case, state. federal and state. Yes, sir. So all, from your perspective, all criminal inquiries into John Paul Miller are concluded? We believe so. We have every reason to believe so. Um, we've asked uh, for definitive answers on that, and the answers and or lack of answers that we've received can only lead to that answer, that we, in fact, that they have, in fact, um, concluded their investigation. So just to confirm, the, the, the decision to withdraw that request was just because it was going going to happen sometime and you didn't want to put the family through that. You both didn't want to put the family through that. Okay, let me see if I understand. You're asking about us withdrawing the request in terms of probate and continuing yes. to serve as a special administrator? Yes. Okay, special administrator has limited duties, okay? And um, she would, uh, our petition was to have her be appointed as the personal representative, which has a, an overall duty of the estate from the beginning to the end. In terms of a special administrator, the, the limitation is to collect, um, as the order stated, is to collect property that may belong to the estate, preserve that property, because at that point there was no personal representative that had been named. And so an estate cannot be without some form of administrator to oversee and protect the property and preserve the estate. So what the court will do is, uh, is kind of like a band-aid measure, a quick measure, is to appoint what's referred to as a special administrator. They also have duties like when there was, there's a conflict of interest because if a personal representative is somehow involved in something else related to the decedent, um, then that may create a conflict. It doesn't prevent them necessarily from serving as a personal representative. Uh, but, the, but as a special administrator, 
her duties uh, were somewhat limited. We have breached all of those, and as far as once we reach this settlement agreement, um, then there, there's no need for her to continue to anything else in Micah's case. The court um, has required us to do a form of two, uh, which we will do, and then once she completes that, the order that was issued by the probate judge was very, very clear in what her duties would, uh, would involve. And so now that, um, now that we've got this global settlement, um, she can step back from that um, there are always some other administrative duties that need to be, you know, finished up with regard to the estate, some required forms through the probate court, um, and assuming that Mr. Miller is appointed her personal representative, which had not any reason to believe he wouldn't be, uh, then he would be tasked with the duties to complete and uh, close out that, um, that estate with regard to whatever forms and documents are required to do that. Yes, if they were if they were not, we would not have reached the agreement. Um, there, as the, as in any type of negotiation, there's always give and take. Um, I once had a, a a retired judge that served as a mediator told me one time when I was a young lawyer said if you're if, if both parties walk away feeling like they didn't get everything um, or they got some things and not everything and everybody feels like they're not exactly a hundred percent happy, then it's then it's a great compromise because that means that. One side didn't get everything that they wanted, but neither did the other, and that would be the same here. But what we got is um, completely satisfactory to the entire family. As you know, Sierra is not only the special administrator uh, and the plaintiff in the marital estate, she's also the personal representative or spokesperson for her very large family. And I can just tell you this, that, that family does nothing that they all don't agree to. So it took a bit to go through that, and everyone, um, you know, contributed uh, in some form or fashion, and therefore, you know, everybody is satisfied with the end result. One last question. Mr. Long, can you talk about what happens in these, the next 10 days, I believe, that, that you spoke mm. about? You... I'm sorry? The, the next 10 days, I believe they had mentioned something about the Oh, yeah, the, the, his honor, uh, just now in the probate matter, has uh, other matters to, uh, there were filings involved in the case. He has to make a ruling on what part of those filings can remain in the record and if part of those filings need to be sealed. So he, there are 10 days set in by his honor just now to give the parties a time to hash that out and, 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 and bring those to light and that way he can make a final ruling. And do you guys, is there any on your side plan to file a wrongful death suit? Absolutely not. No, this um, global settlement settles John Paul Miller and the church and the entire Francis family in their entirety. There will be no actions filed by either one. Um, and um, and, and I, I'd like, again, I want to bring up um, what Ms. Ward um, has brought up in, in two ways about the people who, who've decided to uh, carry on the Justice for Micah slash shut down Solid Rock Church protests that are going on every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock in front of uh, Solid Rock Church. The Francis family just asked them through their attorney to focus their energy somewhere else. She asked them to help focus their energy towards the passing of this Coercive Control Act. And she asked them to focus that energy on the legislators that are, you know, that are around the state. Mm -hmm. She's asking them to do that. That means that the Francis family, Micah's family, the people who love and care for her the most have asked the protesters to leave the church alone. Um, I would ask that they leave the church goers alone. These poor people are just trying to go to church on Sunday and they're being harassed um, and they're being put in fear and they're being made not to feel comfortable trying to go to church. The point is, this is over. Um, this is today, the, the, this agreement, this global mm -hmm. agreement that's been signed by everybody involved is Micah's justice. Um, the next step, which Ms. Ward pointed out, is their, their legislative uh, goal um, to help reach out and talk the state legislature uh, into passing this Coercive Control Act. That's what's left for these protesters to do if they feel like they still have energy to put towards this, not harassing church members. So we would ask that this be the end of that.
Anything else? All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here.